Hello and welcome back to the lab. On the bench today, we have my HP 3420B DC differential voltmeter ratiometer. Um, I acquired this instrument about two years ago and I did a repair of it at that time. So it's in full, fully restored working condition. And uh, so we're not gonna do a repair of this instrument today, but I wanted to demonstrate how we make a DC voltage measurement with this high precise instrument. The HP 3420B was manufactured in uh, 1967. And the B model, they also make an A model, but the B model also contains uh, rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries. So it had NICAD batteries from 1967 in it, which of course were not any, no longer working. So I replaced them with uh, more modern replacements, um, different form factors. So I had to rewire the whole thing to get, to get the batteries to fit inside of it. Uh, I'm gonna open the top of it afterwards and, and, and show that to you. Actually, I'll open the, both the top and the bottom. But I wanted to demonstrate how to make a DC voltage measurement of high precision using this instrument. So let me show you the setup first. We're gonna take a look at, we're gonna measure the DC voltage of the Duraleak 9 volt battery. Okay, so I s simply have my test leads connected to that going into the input of the DC volt differential voltmeter. Um, in parallel with that, I have connected my, let me zoom the camera up to that point, my HP 3455A digital voltmeter in parallel so we can make a measurement of that and see, compare the digital voltmeter reading to the differential voltmeter reading on the 3420B. Um, my my idea is to not look at the 3455, but to simply make a measurement and then look at the, the um, digital voltmeter reading and see how close our measurement actually comes to a more modern uh, digital voltmeter. Even though that voltmeter is also, you know, from the 1970s, um, this is uh, about 10 years older than that. So um, this is, in fact, more precise it may not be more accurate, but it has high, more resolution than the 3455A digital voltmeter. It actually has, um, you could say, seven and a half digits of resolution. Um, but you, you make a voltage measurement by dialing up a reference voltage that compares it to the, the voltage that you're measuring. And you look for the difference between those two readings on this meter and that's how you come up with you read the resulting voltage off the dials of the meter so we're going to do that now first we set it to the zero function and we're going to zero the instrument out using the little pot on the front panel here it's already been zeroed so i don't really have to do that but that's the first step when we switch it to DC differential voltmeter. See, I have it set to 9 volts because I know we're measuring a 9 volt battery. But I'm sure that it's not exactly 9.0000000 volts. So we're going to find out what the actual voltage of this 9 volt Duraleak battery actually is. So we'll switch it to DC differential voltmeter mode. Um, the resolution or the sensitivity of the meter is selected by pushing these blue buttons at the ends of the dials here. So when the times one button is selected, the meter sensitivity is in terms of one volt on the 10 volt range. Um, so um, what that means is each time you, you click this, the meter will move by one, either positive or negative. So that because I'm looking at one volt, the meter is close to one, but it actually reads a little bit higher than one, uh, which means that uh, it's a little bit higher than nine volts. That's what it means. In fact, it reads about 0.4 higher. So I imagine that when we switch to times 10, we will have to set this to about a four to read 9.4 volts. So let's do that. Now you can see that the meter reads about 
4.7. So I imagine that this one will have to set to a 4. And the next one will probably have to be set to a 7. As I set the adjust the dials, the meter comes closer to zero. Um, it still reads more than one, so I have to go up more than one. So it's 9.48. All right, now we can drop down to the next level times 10 to the third sensitivity. So we're looking at the nearest um, 10 millivolts on the 10 volt range now. And then we have to come up by about four more notches. See if I dial it up more than four notches, up to five notches, the meter swings in the negative direction. That means I've gone too far. So I have to switch this back to a four again. Go up to the next level of sensitivity. The meter is swinging slightly negative. That means this has to be a three and this should be a nine. So let's do that. Three, nine. Okay, the meter is still positive. That means this has to come up a little bit more. So we'll switch it up to the times 10 to the fifth which is one millivolt on the 10, no, one micro, wait, 10, 100 millivolts, one, 10 millivolts, one millivolt, 100 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 10 microvolts on the 10 volt range. And we have to come up about four or five more. Let's see, four, see if the meter swings down to zero. Yes, there we go. All right, so the battery, the Duracell battery actually measures 9.48394. And the last digit is read directly off the meter and it looks like a two. So the voltage is 9.483942. That's how many volts this nine volt battery measures. Now let's take a look at the HP 3455A digital voltmeter and see what the voltage reads on that instrument. It says 9.48398. I had 9.483942. So I'm off by a couple of microvolts <laughs> and that's about it. Very close, very close. Now I have not calibrated this instrument, but it's within a couple of microvolts. And so it's an almost 60 year old instrument and it still reads within a few uh, parts per million. Um, very nice, uh, very proud to own this instrument. So let's open it up and take a look at the inside. Okay, so I removed the top cover and also removed the screws from the inner uh, guard cover on the top. And we'll take a look inside the instrument now. Oh, first, let's, let's read the little warning here. Do not remove top or bottom covers except for service or calibration. Do not touch anything inside these covers unless clean rubber gloves are worn. Leakage paths caused by fingerprints and dirt on components, switches, or printed circuit boards will reduce accuracy. Um, you have to heed that warning because you can really um, destroy the precision of this instrument. So here we go. Here's inside, inside of the top cover. We have um, some decade dividers here with uh, some adjustment pots, which I don't suggest you mess with unless you know what you're doing. And uh, I, I am not going to adjust those pots because they are set just perfectly the way they are. Um, underneath this board, there's um, some more precision resistors, 
to connect it to each of the um, decade switches, rotary switches here on the front panel. Uh, here's the one thing I wanted to show you. If you look, oops, pardon me. If you, if you look very carefully down here, where my finger is pointing, there is the dreaded uh, photo chopper module. Like the other instruments I've been working on, it has one of those photo chopper modules in it as well. Um, this one happens to be working perfectly, and so I'm not going to make any changes to it. Not going to do any repairs on that module unless absolutely necessary. Um, here's the driver board for that module that uh, generates the frequencies to uh, to fire the neons at the correct um, and appropriate rate to make the uh, photo chapter module work. And there are adjustment, adjustment pots for the precision and accuracy of each range, zero offset and so on and so forth. Okay, let's flip it over and take a look underneath. Okay, so I have turned the instrument over and uh, removed the bottom cover and also the inner guard shield cover from the bottom of the instrument. And you can see a bunch of gold-plated switch contacts down here. Because they're gold-plated, they don't really have any corrosion, which is a good thing because I don't really want to have to spray any kind of contact cleaner down in there and gunk up the accuracy of this instrument again. You can see over here is the uh, the NICAD batteries that I, I wired up each one of these cells to, to make four 24 volt um, battery packs um, and had to like install them diagonally inside the instrument in order to make them fit um, where the originals were, a different size and shape. Um, but it's, uh, it's 96 volts worth of batteries. It's kind of dangerous. You don't want to be messing around with that, actually. Um, but they're in there nice and solid. And these replacement NICADs worked out really well. Um, so this instrument actually works better off of batteries than it does off of AC because there's no internal noise whatsoever. So the readings are much more stable and accurate. Um, also, it's generally used... Um, in a, in, a, in a situation where you used to be able to send it into uh, National Bureau of National Institute of Standards and Technology um, to get it calibrated precisely and leave it running on battery the entire time. And that way you would minimize uh, the amount of drift um, of the precision of the instrument. You would use it for calibrating precise DC voltage reference uh, sources for calibration labs. That's what this instrument was primarily used for back in the 1960s. Um, I just have it today because I I collected them and uh, I didn't have this model number so I got it at a very reasonable price and after installing the batteries and uh, doing a couple of other minor things to it and cleaning up, cleaning up the outside, um, it works good as new just like in 1967. So, there you have it, the Hewlett Packard 3420B DC Differential Voltmeter Ratiometer. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more fun videos of uh, vintage HP equipment and other interesting stuff. Thanks again.